people go back to their farm and my channel. It's a beautiful September day today. It's been a terrible, terrible, terribly wet summer here, um, but we still have lots of flowers. And I thought it'd be nice to just show you around today, see what's happening, see what we're up to in September. It's kind of feels like it's becoming quite autumnal, it feels like it's drawn towards the end of the season, but there's still a good bit of life yet. And as always, there's a lot of work to do thinking about next year. So let's go, let's have a look at the dahlias first of all. So take a look at this, how gorgeous is this? All that work of the Oladelias is absolutely worth it. So we started in March, putting them all up, and then we spent two weeks putting them out. In about, hopefully, at least six weeks time, I'll be digging them all up, storing them over the winter. Next February, splitting them all. Hopefully they'll all have survived over the winter without any frost damage. And then this is the result. So there's so much work. So they are, but they are so completely worth it. And like, look how many still left. And I have harvested thousands of stems because I've had so many weddings this year, so many in August. And there's just looking absolutely gorgeous. And if you'll see my previous video on my top 10 delays, and you'll see which ones I love, which is basically most of them. But <laughs> there are always ones that you favor a bit more than others, but they're still coming. And I think next week I'm going to go through them all and give them a really good deadheading from the bottom. And hopefully I'll get a good uh, last surge of growth because I have a wedding in the end of October and I'm really hoping that they're still there for that. Then we have the sweet pea which is finishing. I'm actually still able to cut a few wee stems from this but the quality is just not as good as it has been over the last few months but I want it all to go to seed now. You can see the seed pods are starting to form here now so I'm going to be really super disciplined with myself this year and not buy any new sweet pea seeds because I get so many seeds. I actually have still tons from um, earlier plants, my high scent ones that I grew in the polytunnel with the seed. I've got loads of them. I'll have all these varieties as well. And I will use them for myself for planting next year and for the workshop, the gardening workshop that I will do. And I just find that seeds that you save yourself just really work so well. Obviously the, they know the conditions to grow in and they're, they're well used to it so uh, it's a really really worthwhile thing to do so if you have you can see like they're starting to go all brown at the bottom and you might think oh it's terrible looking it's not a good look for the garden with but it's brilliant because you're saving yourself a lot of money for next year's plants because we're always thinking ahead i did have a bit of storm damage and um, my my frame that i was so proud i put it up and actually got damaged so next year i need to make it a bit stronger but yes, the sweet pea have been fabulous. I've, I've got more sweet pea in the polytunnel. So, you know, I always talk about succession planting. So I've had sweet pea from about April right through and I'm just going to have it for another few, few months. This, uh, are, these are all the annuals that I was growing this year. Um, I still have quite a few things left out here. So we've got the ame, we've got the status, we've still got some straw flowers tons of different types of cosmos and um, we have amaranthus way down at the bottom there as you can see here i started planting this one and i do, try not to plant the whole thing all at once i try to do it in stages so that then it's coming up at different times as you can see the little tiny cosmos here see it's got very very faint now and um, but i'm waiting for this to go to seed and i will collect loads of seeds from that um, the cosmos further on down is much better quality because it's planted later and then so hopefully it will just keep going till the first frost and basically I, I just want to show you something else actually down here because as I'm saying that we are getting ready for next year I've already started to dig up some things that had finished and we have put down some of our own homemade compost we've got a row here that I've started um, and another row fully uh, finished over there ready to plant with our biennials so the sweet williams the corn cockles and i'm going to put some larkspur and different things out in these beds so that they will come up june next year so that i'm not waiting for just the annuals that will grow in the spring so totally worthwhile thing to do if you're kind of thinking what can you be planting now get those hardy annuals get the biennials 
plant it out, uh, absolutely worthwhile. You will not regret it next year. So we'll have a look at the other polytunnel down here, which I mostly use for spring flowers. So you'll see that I've taken out quite a lot. I do put some bits in it for the summer, but I find it gets really, really hot in the summer. So I don't really plant that much. We use it a bit more for vegetables in the summertime. And then they come up, a lot of them have come and gone now. I've got space left for planting the tulips, the ranunculus, which I'm getting all the emails now that the tulips will be arriving in a few weeks. And then that starts that whole process again. You can see all our veg here. Lots of gorgeous veg. Love growing veg. I really recommend doing that as well. Like you may think, why are you not using all this space for flowers? But I just love growing veg because you get to walk out and pick things and eat them and cook them. And I just find it really relaxing. It really like, because flowers can sometimes be busy, busy, busy. I find growing veg sort of relaxes me a wee bit. So in here, I have some more straw flowers because I mostly grow straw flowers just for drying. So the autumn wreath workshops, the Christmas wreath workshops are both coming up soon. And I find that in here, they just get like nice, good, strong stems and they just seem to do really, really well and they'll keep coming for ages. So I'm going to keep cutting them, keep cutting them, then more will, will shit up. You'll see over here, so it's all blank now, apart from a few weeds, which I will get sorted. Um, and then that will all be the spring flowers for next year. In here I've got some zinnias, some celosia, I've got more amaranthus, I've got, that's more zinnias down there, and my calendula, calendula trick that I told you about whenever um, I planted some along the side in the springtime to take away the aphids from my ranunculus and it worked a treat. They've actually just kept going all summer and I've actually planted another row and it has really, really worked. So it's just a top tip if you're like us, not really wanting to use very many chemicals, you want to keep it very natural. There's so many solutions of just trying to do, use pests, I even mean, like using that word pests, but on insects that are maybe not in the, the position that you would like them to be. Um, I just find that really, really good, a really um, helpful way of dealing with it. So let's go and look at final polytunnel. It's full of delias still. Um, I planted some delias in it quite late because as I said, I have the wedding at the end of October and as soon as there will be a big frost, a hard frost here, all the delias will turn completely black and that will be them gone. So I'm thinking if I have some in the polytunnel, then hopefully then I should have them um, further, maybe even into November, slightly further on. So very worthwhile thing to do. However, last year, we actually didn't get a first frost in in like towards the end of the year. It was, I was taking out delays even the next year. I left some in to see how long they would last and they lasted all over Christmas and everything. So you just never know what's going to happen. And then have a look at all our bunny tails. Aren't they just gorgeous? I love bunny tails. They'll be dry and moose too. We've got more sunflowers loads of sunflowers and then you can see we still have loads more still to come through so very key just keep them coming keep keep planting very key not to get to the point in the season where you're just kind of done and like don't want to do anymore so as you see down there we have our dahlias so a lot more we actually have roses down there as well um i think they've, they've actually done really well in polytunnel i planted them last year and i wasn't really sure about putting them in polytunnel but actually really pleased with I've had the really, really long stems on them, which has been really good. We have some beds here that are just waiting now to be taken out. But as always, I'm waiting for everything to go to seed because you get so many seeds. That's our asters. They were fabulous. They don't look fabulous now, <laughs> but they were amazing. Massive big pink heads. Cut so many of them, but now I need, I need to keep some now for next year. And we have more amaranthus down there, more sweet pea down there and I said more uh, delays and quite a few chrysanthemums as well so one of the, what I'm really doing at the minute is thinking about next year so if you like look at these gorgeous gorgeous color but look we see how many seeds I can get from one seed head I just take that off this like it's not even one seed I'm leaving some but look look at that and then that can be used for next year 
So it's amazing, it's such a really worthwhile thing to do, saving seed. So, um, and look how many, and that's like one plant. So absolutely fantastic. I've got my sweet williams in here as well for next year. And I, this dahlia, I don't even do anything with this dahlia ever. I have never split it. I, sh I do need to, because it's got a bit out of control. But I left, I didn't realize it was in here at one point and then it just grew and it just looked really pretty and never I just left it. It's so gorgeous, Waltzing Matilda, it's called. Um, and it's never been had any protection from frost, nothing. I just left it and it just does so well every year. It's maybe something in that. However, I do need to split it, so I'm going to do that this year. So yes, so that's really um, what's happening at the minute. So one of the key things is to get on that planting for next year. So you see, I've got all my my seedlings getting ready, getting ready to go out, and got a lot more in there as well but and then you can see everything drying in there too you can see that get ready for my wreath workshops and lots of things happening at the minute so anyway i thought just to show you around and who knows what, what it's going to be like on my next tour probably october and everything changes so quickly and then everything will be coming out of the ground all the annuals be coming out so all very fast paced fast moving in the flower flower farming world but love it all anyway hope you like this tour if you have any comments or anything just then send me a wee message let me know if you've watched it if you've enjoyed it and as always subscribe and i will see you next time